Hey everybody, Gil here with the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser. And in last week's video, you might recall we finished replacing the core in our first large um, deck opening and deck repair section. On the starboard side of the boat, we cut about a five foot by two foot um, opening in the top layer of skin. We removed all the old core. We sanded the bottom skin of fiberglass really coarse uh, so we get a good um, surface to adhere to. We thickened some epoxy resin and we um, laid it down on that lower skin. We um, we adhered the hardwood mahogany core back down to that lower skin and then after that cured we um, smoothed over the top with another thickened epoxy. We filled between all the um, small openings of the hardwood core. Uh, again, very different. Most people do this with plywood uh, and we considered that, but the deck was hardwood already and we thought, you know, rather than go back with something that we considered to be inferior to plywood, we went ahead and went back with hardwood. So we put, we put half inch mahogany core into the boat. So as the video last week ended, I made a mention about having a bit of crisis of decision. And in today's video, what we'll do is we're going to show you how we started to lay the fiberglass over that hardwood core and thicken the deck back up to get to the original thickness of the fiberglass that was on top of the core. Uh, you'll also see why midway through that job, I started to have second thoughts on whether or not that was really the right approach, um, given the scope of the larger project around the rest of the deck. So in today's video, you're going to see how we went ahead and laid that mat using West epoxy system, epoxy resin, and fiberglass mat. Um, and then I'm going to talk a lot about why I started to question my decision and more importantly the testing that we did to determine whether we were going down the correct path or not. And then I'll share with you what our next steps are. I'm happy with our result now. I'm happy with the direction we're going. But boy, it was a couple of weeks of just crazy um, thought around what I should or should not be doing. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Please do leave a comment down below. We, uh, we love that. Give us the thumb, give it the thumbs up. We certainly would appreciate that. And feel free to share this video with others that you think might find it interesting or entertaining or frankly laugh at what we're doing wrong because we probably learn from mistakes and we just do it right here on film with everybody. So thanks all. Enjoy the video. Before I got started, I wanted to get the fiberglass mat cut at the right size. I knew once I had my epoxy mixed up, I didn't want to be taking the time to cut and arrange or trim the actual mat. And more importantly, I didn't want it getting filled up with a wet epoxy while I did it. So I've laid this out and uh, what I've done here is I'm cutting the very first layer to be the right thickness to fit down over the wood and not overlap the deck at all. And then each subsequent layer I have made about an inch wider on both sides. So it's starting to go up on that section of the deck, you can see where I'm walking and that section of the deck is ground all the way down to the fiberglass um, and what I'm ultimately doing by by building up those layers with each piece of fiberglass being wider than the one previous is starting to integrate it directly into the existing deck and have it be just as strong as it was um, when it was one giant sheet as well. So I went ahead and mixed up my epoxy here and as I mentioned before we've been using West Epoxy System uh, number 105 resin and we used 209 Extra Slow Hardener and I really did that because I thought uh, I'm a little bit inexperienced here I want to make sure I'm using something that gives me the most time to, um, to, to get everything set without uh, having issues. Um, so we've mixed this up really well and I'm basically just painting over this surface that is now cured. This is the thickened layer epoxy I put down over the hardwood. Um, so I'm getting this whole thing wetted out. Uh, before I go ahead and start laying the mat down on top of it. You'll notice closest to the bottom of the screen here, there's some gaps in my core here. Uh, I'm aware of that. What my thought was is we're doing this in one section at a time, so um, I decided that what I would do is patch the deck. I'm not really worried about that side being perfect and being adhered to because the next section of deck I'm going to do is just aft of that uh, section of the deck, so basically below what the, you see on the screen. Um, and ultimately I'm gonna cut this section out right over the edge, I'll overlap it, butt it right up against the new section and then do another patch to the, uh, the next section. Uh, one other thing I think it's worth pointing out, you'll notice that some prep work I didn't film, but along the edge where the fiberglass deck is cut, um, and you can see the wood exposed there, I ground about four or five inches of the deck down to raw fiberglass and I did it at an angle so it actually starts at the thickness of the top layer of uh, fiberglass skin and angles almost down to you know maybe a, um, a millimeter or two thick uh, darn near level with the deck in most places. So I'm starting here by laying my piece of cut fiberglass mat. This is 1.8 ounce cross strand mat. I actually bought this stuff from um, from a military yard that had gone out of business and they were making um, they were making fiberglass ships. Um, so I, I thought this would be a really good military grade glass. 
What I found later was, uh, while it's good and stiff, and I like the way it actually sets up, what I didn't care for is it's fairly rigid. And if you have any kind of a curved surface or an uneven surface, it definitely got air pockets below it. So you can see I'm actually battling a little bit with the wind here. Um, so it was, it was a bit breezy today, and I don't know what happened to my camera lens. It looks like something got blown onto it or it fogged up or something. So I apologize. This clears up in just a minute, so I'm not sure exactly what it was. But... Um, but anyway, the, I just went ahead and used these vacuum accessories to hold everything down so I can start wetting out the, uh, the top of the fiberglass. And I, again, that surface below is still wet. So the idea here is this is kind of sticking down into that. And you'll notice as I pour the epoxy on here, uh, I'm using just a, a three inch wide chip brush for now. And I'm kind of pushing it down and dabbing it into the fiberglass mat. And what you want to see is it go from a white color to relatively translucent. That's how you know it's completely absorbed all of that uh, liquid epoxy resin. So I'm gonna fast forward to a section here where I'm working a little closer to the camera so you can get a better view of this. You can see I've made a little bit of progress here. I've, I've wetted it out. You can really see the difference between that section that is white versus translucent. And again, being fairly um, new at this, I definitely did small batches. I was using about, um, about 10 to 13 pumps of each of the little manual pump uh, uh, dispensers on the epoxy resin and hardener. Uh, the roller I have here is what they call a fin roller. Uh, it's about four or five inches wide. It has small little um, ridges along it. And what it's used for is to um, go slowly along the fiberglass mat. And what you're doing is you're basically working out any air bubbles that might be trapped below the fiberglass mat. You definitely don't want those gaps in it. So that's ultimately what I'm doing here. And you notice I'm doing this slowly. You don't want to run it back and forth as if you're uh, you know, trying to use a rotary wheel cutter on something. I've been using epoxy in small batches. Uh, and you can see I'm using these little pump systems and just a small one quart container. Uh, you dole out essentially one pump for resin and one pump for hardener. So in this case, if I did 13 pumps of resin, I would do 13 pumps of hardener. And I apologize for the butt shot while I'm pumping this epoxy. As I mentioned before, this fiberglass mat was rather thick and rigid. And what I was running into here is every once in a while, because the underlying surface wasn't 100% smooth, I would get air bubbles between the fiberglass mat and that underlying surface. So you saw there I used a pair of old scissors and I'd have to cut a slit in it, add a little bit more epoxy, and then use my fin roller to roll out any air pockets that were in there. So here's where I have my first bit of crisis of decision. I realized that this fiberglass mat was really thin and in order to build up the layers as thick as I need to, it was going to take a lot of layers. So I went ahead and I had some old um, 24 ounce uh, Roven Woving or Woven Roving. I always get that backwards. It's essentially a, a cross thatched thicker set of fiberglass and it's really for building up um, thickened layers, right? Adding some, some real strength to it. So what I did was I took a small piece here and I cut it out and I wanted the, um, the fingers, the edge of this, um, this roven woving or woven roving, whatever it is, to overlap the edge of that ground portion of the deck to see what kind of thickness I could get out of this. What I realized is even as thick as this is, right, 24 ounces per square yard as opposed to 1.8 ounces per square yard, this laid down significantly better than the thinner cross strand mat which is unusual because cross strand mat usually lays down really well. Supposedly it's going to be very good for going around curves, etc. So I'm not 100% sure I liked the, that fiberglass mat I had. So you can see here I'm using epoxy, same exact process. It just takes a little bit more resin to completely saturate the thicker, um, the thicker mat. So that was the first piece of um, concern I had. Uh, and I really did this test section here just to start to build up that thickness and test it all out for myself. Here's where my second crisis of decision came about. I've heard before that if you take cross strand mat and rather than cut it and get a hard edge, if you tear it, it gives you a lot of loose fibers that tend to get wet and integrate better into the surfaces. So what I was trying to do here is take very small pieces of this and start to build a bit of a bridge between the existing layer I had down on the wood already and the edge of the ground down fiberglass. And I'm doing this in really small sections because I'm really kind of figuring this out a little bit as I go. Um, so what I was doing is tearing this stuff down, laying it down on some, some wet epoxy I'd painted on with a brush, and then dabbing it with the brush to thicken it, and then using the fin roller to work out the air. 
I was really struggling with this because there was a little bit of a gap. I mentioned I ground that fiberglass down almost directly to the core level, but it wasn't completely to the core level, so it was leaving a small gap there. And I was a little bit concerned that I might not have a tremendously strong uh, surface. So I continued this process of tearing the, um, the fiberglass mat, and you notice this is a larger piece than I started with. I'm pressing it down into the wet epoxy that I'd painted down, and, I, and I'm now using the epoxy to add a little bit more. And you'll notice that this particular piece crosses a little further onto that ground deck. Um, so I went ahead and I, I went around the entire opening along the edge here where the existing deck met the wood, and I added um, two and in some places three layers of this 1.6 ounce uh, cross strand mat there to bridge that, uh, that gap. Now, I also realized that I was gonna have to um, not work on this for two days. My other thinking here was by doing this, I was going to seal this thing off. So if it happened to get rain, which was in the forecast, the deck was going to be sealed and I wouldn't get the, any moisture down into the brand new core. Um, so I didn't necessarily regret doing this, but as I came back the next day and I looked at it, there was definitely air gaps below that surface. And what it forced me to do was really question whether or not I wanted to go down this whole process of doing this as I was with epoxy resin and fiberglass mat if I had those air pockets. To me, I was starting to see what was the start of a delamination issue, right? An air pocket between two surfaces is essentially where the lamination isn't attached very well. Um, just doing this one section, I used a full gallon of 105 resin and the, um, the large size of 209 hardener. Just running off the shelf at West Marine, that's about $175 um, as of the filming of this thing in, uh, in February of 2017. I'm sure I can get that at a, at a wholesale price a little bit cheaper, but I was using West in small batches. As I was doing the repairs on this portion of the deck, I started just to do the thought of what our overall project was really gonna look like. I knew I had a couple of other soft spots in the deck that I was gonna need to repair, very similar to what you're seeing in this video. I also wanted to add a few layers of fiberglass over the entire deck. And I wanted to do that because when I removed the teak off the top of it, I essentially took off a half inch of additional support, right? I understand it's decorative, but there was still some thickness and some rigidity that that teak added to the overall structure of the deck. So I really wanted to go back with another layer or two to strengthen over the, the entire deck and, and form it as one solid um, uh, surface. The other thing is, as, as you guys are probably painfully aware if you watch these videos, I removed about 7,000 screws from the surface of the deck. Now, if I remove that many, that means I have somewhere near 7,000 holes in the deck, and I've been using a small uh, syringe-like deal with epoxy and filling each one of those holes as I've gone. But that's 7,000 possible places of water intrusion if something were to come loose, or frankly, I didn't fill one very well. So the other thought was, if I laid glass over the entire deck, that would give me um, another way to sort of guarantee and ensure that I don't have any more water intrusion. So as I started thinking about this, I realized the cost of this was going to be pretty significant. A two foot by five foot section cost me about $175 and I wasn't even at the thickness I needed to be yet. Now you take that by, uh, you know, it's a 51 foot boat. Let's say uh, in front of the coach house, I've got about 20 feet or so. It's 15 feet wide at the widest place. It's about nine or 10 as I get closer to the bow. So let's just assume we're, we're talking about 20, you know, 20, let's just say it's 20 times 10, it's just 200 square feet of it there's a lot of surface to go through. And um, so $175 for the gallon of resin with the hardener to accommodate that amount, which probably gives me a yield of about a gallon and a quarter, maybe a gallon and a third. Polyester resin on the other, case, on the other hand, runs about $24 a gallon. And if you buy five gallons, you get the hardener for free. So the cost difference is significant. So I went and I did some research, and it's amazing the conflicting information you get. Um, I really, really respect Cruisers Forum. It's a great resource for people who live aboard boats, and you can post questions, and, and people will reply back to them. And I quickly realized after posting this question of epoxy resin or fiberglass resin, which is the better choice given the details of this particular project, I realized it's a lot like a Ford and Chevy question. If you have a Ford, you love a Ford, and you believe a Ford is better than a Chevy, and it's 180 degrees from that if you're a Chevy driver and you believe that's better than the Ford. The overall um, consistent themes that I heard was, if you want something that is gonna be a mechanical bond between uh, a new surface and an old surface, if the old surface happens to be fiberglass, a hardened fiberglass, like I have on my deck, epoxy resin 
has a better adherence to that. It does a better job of adhering to that than polyester resin. Um, I have read in a couple of different places that it's about 20 to 25 percent less secure, less strong if you did fiberglass resin versus epoxy resin. I've had other people explain to me um, that it doesn't really matter. The reality is fiberglass resin has been used for 40 years. It's an absolutely wonderful product and if you prep the surface correctly, you grind down any epoxy that's in place, you put the fiberglass resin on top of it, and you um, you ensure that, it, that it's adhered and the surface preparation is good, cleaned with acetone and everything else, you will get perfect adhere, ad, adhesion. Uh, and it will create a good mechanical bond. It won't be a chemical bond, it's going to be a mechanical bond uh, because the layer below it's not wet, so it's not a chemical bond where those two are bonding together. The other interesting thing I found out from several insurance adjusters are if you were to have an accident or, or a damage to your boat and you took your boat to a boat yard and covered this under insurance, the insurance will only cover the material that the boat was originally made of. So in my case, I have an FRP, a fiberglass resin, um, um, fiberglass polyester resin boat, and if I were to have a repair commissioned by the insurance agency, they would only pay like for like. Now, if I had an epoxy boat, they would pay for it to be epoxy because they believe that the matched material is a better solution. Uh, I've also heard from a few people that say, absolutely, in 40 years since my boat was originally built, epoxy resins and even vinyl ester as opposed to polyester is a better mechanical bonding solution, and it tends to be a harder surface. But the challenge with mixing two different surfaces where you have potentially a polyester resin surface and an epoxy resin surface, you may very well get what's considered hard spots or rigid spots between those two different surfaces. And there is a thought that that is a, a stress location that could cause cracks and or a delamination or a separation where that bond took place because of the differences in the, um, uh, the strength or rigidity of those two different surfaces. So this really led me to um, this decision of, should I stop what I'm doing right now, don't put any more epoxy resin down, and if I'm gonna do this, grind the entire deck down and go down with polyester resin, which is easier to work with, hardens a little quicker, and would run me significantly less money? Or do I continue going down this path of epoxy resin? So I really was a bit torn by it, and I, and I kind of came to the conclusion that I'm gonna spend the money on the epoxy resin. As long as the epoxy resin will truly adhere and adhere well, I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, the reason I went down that path is the effort of grinding every bit of epoxy off of my existing deck, and by the way, um, the gel coat and the, uh, the mechanical bond material that was between my fiberglass deck and my teak deck was an epoxy-based product, an epoxy-based uh, adhesion product. So while I have a fiberglass boat, I had a layer of epoxy gel coat, a layer of epoxy um, sealer and uh, adhesion, or glue essentially, holding the teak down, I would have to grind all of that off, get it down to raw fiberglass so that my polyester resin had a good surface to sit on. Well before I went through that work, which was going to be a significant amount of effort and work and, and drive my poor neighbors here at the marina crazy because that, that noise is horrible, um, and it would take me days and days on end. Instead of doing that, what I decided to do is run a test. So the video is getting a little bit long. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna post the results of that particular test in next week's video. I need to finish editing that piece of it and showing you how the stress test was and what ultimately the results of that stress test were. So I wanna thank everybody for watching this video. I know it's getting a little bit long. Safe sailing from the Sailing Vessel Dream Chaser. And thanks everybody. Please do give the video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and we hope you do enjoy it. Bye now. Hey everybody, thanks for watching, and please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or even Tumblr. Please take a moment and go over to our website at svdreamchaser.com to download free resources for cruising and how-to projects. Get your thumbs and mouses ready. We also have a couple of links right on the screen for some other playlists and videos that we think you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching, fellow dreamers.